Okay, g'day Andrew. Uh, look, uh, just quickly, I just dragged and dropped your image in there, so it's sitting underneath here. All I did was basically trace it over, uh, as you can see. And what it happens is with trusses is that usually you would have a girder truss that would hold up other trusses. Now, so what I did, uh, I'll just uh, just uh, see. Let's see if I can undo what I did there. Okay, so all I did basically was, there's a rectangle, I just followed the lines around here. And now I have where two straight trusses would go, I'll go one more. Right, so you can see where these, these trusses are straight, so this is all parallel from here to here. Right. And... I, like, I always like, it's always nice just to copy a face over here and then you can see what happens when you put a roof on it, right? So you can see that I, I just went and put a, a hip roof on there, then I basically just changed all these ends into gables. And then that way I've got a clearer picture of how the roof's going to work together so you can see these trusses are straight and these trusses are straight. So <clears throat> when we go to here, uh, essentially, I'll just get rid of this line here. Oops. Uh, so we just go to our truss tool. And look, I'm not sure of the pictures and everything like that that you're using, but I was just working on this. So, uh, so we've just got common trusses. Do we want them with a gable truss? Whatever. You already know how to do your gable trusses. I'll just see if I can just clarify the issue that you've got here. <clears throat> so, essentially, I have to start from here because any trusses that go any longer than that are going to, you know, be cut short. And I'm sure you probably noticed that already, right? And obviously, I've got one here. I probably should have put a girder truss in there, but. I think you already know how to do that, judging by your image. And these trusses here are square as well. <clears throat> right. Maybe not so much, actually. You'll see what happened there. See, that line wasn't square. Okay. So I'm going to undo it, Control Z. And it means that I need to work my trusses from here to here. And there's also going to be uh, a girder truss in there as well, okay, which is this diagonal one here. So to put in a single truss, all you really need to do is zoom into where you need to go, and it's kind of hard with two trusses there, you'll see they'll clash a little bit here. And here, and if you want it to be a double truss, you simply just write in 70 millimeters for whatever the thickness of your truss is, so if I say 70. <coughs> Right, and now I have a girder truss, but that girder truss won't be the same pitch. It won't plane. Right, because the run of the truss is longer, so you would find that that truss would probably be a lower pitch. You'd probably see that over here better. See that truss is sticking up? <clears throat> so you need to ascertain what the pitch is. Okay, so the best way to do that is to find a center line. And if I can just get a center line in here. <clears throat> and now I can see, well, this, the pitch of this truss actually needs to change. And it's not much, because it's only a really small 45 degree, but it is still a change. So I can figure out how much lower my truss needs to go, and I can simply click on that truss and go and change uh, the, the truss height. It looks to be a couple of degrees. I'm going to take a guess. Um, where am I? Trusses. <clears throat> And what was I, 25? So I reckon it's about 24 degrees, roughly. You probably should do this properly, obviously, if you're going to build it too much. So, yeah, it was very, very little difference. Um, so you're probably best off just figuring out what your pitch of the truss is, and you would do that down here. So I'd say use this here. And I'm looking for a level line. <coughs> Why did you do that for me better? And I want to know what the pitch of the truss is going to be up to here. So from here to here. Oops. You notice down the bottom, down here in the VCB, it'll tell me what the pitch difference is. 0 0.01, okay. <clears throat> so really that's 24.9 degrees, that, that truss. Twenty-four point nine. <clears throat> right. 
Okay, now I have the pitch of the truss that I was after, pretty close to. Okay, <clears throat> we then have trusses that are going to run into them. So we can see here we're going to have a girder truss to hold this one up here. And I did notice on the image that you sent that you had internal walls there. Look, I usually use this, leave this stuff to the truss manufacturers because you can see that we have load bearing points there and you can have point loads and all of that kind of stuff in there. Unless you're detailing trusses to be built, I would, would leave that to the manufacturer, but anyway. Okay, so <clears throat> the next thing I need to do is I need to understand where my intersection points are, so then I can figure out where my trusses are going to go. Now this is going to be a little bit time consuming. So I need to go, well 600 centers or whatever your truss centers are going. I'll just go say 1200, I don't know what you're doing here. Okay, so I say, let's just go. <clears throat> I'm just going to draw a line here, I'm going to move it. Right, so select the line, move it, 1200, and go times 3. Now you can see that I'm going to have a short truss here, I'm going to have a short truss here, and I'm going to have a short truss here. But the reason why I drew the line the full length is so that I could actually, um, just make sure you don't have a truss selected, obviously, when you try and draw another one, because it'll change your originals. Okay. <clears throat> And I've got to go back to 25 degrees. Submit. Right. I have a truss from here to here. And I only really want to come out 35 because that's the width of the truss. Right. And you can see that that truss is going to need to be cut. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. <coughs> 35. The reason why this one here was a double truss because it's holding extra weight, but obviously that your uh, truss manufacturer designed that. 35. <coughs> right, now what I need to do is actually intersect these trusses. Right. So let's uh, have a look outside of a roof, which I've sort of messed out of messing around with a couple over here. Let's delete this off here. Okay, so what really all I did was just cut my truss. Okay, so if I draw another truss in here, uh, and because these are going to be staggered as well, it's going to be a little bit more work. So essentially, what you're trying to do here, I'm going to make this unique. Watch what happens if I keep clicking in there. Notice it selected all of the bottom cords. Well, I only really want it to make one of the bottom cords, right? So right click, go to type one more, make unique, right? And then if I go inside of here, I can actually cut that truss out. Right, I can just get rid of this. There's a little bit of messing around to do, so... Um, there we go. And if you want to tidy up all your edges, you can tidy them up as well. Right, <coughs> now I've got my uh, bottom cord out of there. Probably. Right, and you can see that I need a vertical rise. I've got to do the same with this one here. Uh, make unique. Click clicking into you make it unique. Otherwise, you'll change all of the truss cords in, in your whole model. Okay, so line. Looking for vertical. <coughs> right. Put my line through here, and the same would be on the bottom. And same would be on the opposite side. Right, and I should be able to delete this one over here. <coughs> I'm going to actually control X because I drew it outside of the component. I should have been in here. Whoops. I'm trying to select the truss. trusses at the top of each other there. Right. See that's not made unique yet. Make unique. Right. Now I'll get into there, I just go edit, paste in place. And what it actually did is it broke my truss, so I can just simply just get rid of these here. I'm not sure, you know, why you need to go in, into that sort of much detail, but and the same goes with this one. So basically, I'm just cutting those trusses, 
right? It just it's the way that it actually happens on site. There are a couple of different ways you could do. You could have internal load bearing walls or or a couple of other things like that. But that's how you would um, do your trusses. <clears throat> the best thing about uh, creating a roof like this is that sometimes you go, you know what? I think there was something in your question about there might have been a, a gable or something out here. I don't know what it was. You know, something like this maybe. I wouldn't try and trust that. It, it would cost you too much money to do it. You know, it's easier to pitch this on site, and really all you do is just go to your your roof tool and hit your your trusses, and then you'll get your rafter lengths and everything like that. Uh, so there's a little bit of working with trusses. Sometimes they don't actually create. I haven't drawn that properly, as you can see. Sometimes they don't actually create um, trusses for everything. And if you did have a valley in here, a truss manufacturer would charge you more to create those trusses than it would for you to pitch it on site. So yeah, just no, a matter of knowing when to and when not to truss. But definitely, uh, I'll just delete this uh, roof here. Definitely always try and draw your roof first, so then you can see well, why isn't it working, you know? Uh, that would work reasonably well. That's how it would actually work, and and uh, you might find that you need to put some stick timber in there to allow for, which you can do <coughs> inside of your roof here. So if I put this roof over top of this roof here, uh, I could then figure out where my stick timber was going to go. Right, so I think uh, probably something we didn't make clear uh, was that you can draw singular or double trusses quite easily. Okay, uh, it's just a matter of basically, you know, as I said, go to here, here, and <clears throat> you just need to make sure you don't want a gable truss because it'll, you know, in some cases you might, uh, and you don't want an end truss. I probably should have turned that off, right? And therefore, if I go from here to here and back the distance of the truss, see this is 35. If I just run in 35 millimeters, oops, 35, it gives me one truss. Okay. You can have one truss wherever you want to. If I go more than the spacing, 600, you'll see this will still do one truss. Right? But if I went more than the spacing, it'll do several trusses. Right? Alright, hope that helps. Cheers.